Like I'm not even gonna do warm ups or anything like that on this. I'll do cool downs, but not necessarily warm ups. Just want to post the link in a couple of places and we'll start up. If anybody's out there, I'm not even going to do one or anything like that. I'm just holding cool down. Morning, we'll just give it a couple of seconds right now before we can start off. But today we're starting off something new. Uh, this is gonna be introduction to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So the idea on this class is, uh, this stream, what you're watching right now, is that if you've never done Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu before, um, this is gonna be a good place to start off with, okay? Uh, and this will be good for information. If you have a partner to work with, uh, I brought Trevor, who's obviously got way more experience than brand new. Um, but I do need a body to work with on this. Um, so this is designed also if you've done jiu-jitsu before and you have a housemate or shelter in place, uh, somebody that hasn't done it before, this is gonna be a good class to show them. And it's gonna be based off of our fundamentals curriculum uh, with a couple of things. Like number one, obviously this is remote. We're doing this live, uh, live to us. Everything's live to us, I guess. Um, but you'll also be able to review the broadcast here on YouTube. So if I wasn't clear on anything, you'll go ahead and be able to come back to that. So that's number one. Uh, number two um, is we're wearing our gis right now. I've said this in a lot of our classes, kind of establish a sense of normality for us because this is the standard Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uniform. Um, but nothing I'm gonna show you uh, over the course when we're doing these intro classes is gonna require the, the gi to be on. Okay, that's the name of the uniform right now. Uh, why do we wear the gi? Uh, traditional, in a lot of ways, like the idea is that this simulates clothing more than anything else from a self defense grappling standpoint. And in terms of clothing, you want something that's durable that you can pull, yank, shove, twist, or whatever, and you're not going to do it. That's what these things are designed for. Um, but if you don't have a gi on or any kind of uniform on, don't stress it. You don't need it for anything that I'm going to show on that. But I like wearing this right now. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go and talk too much about the history of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, or, or a lot of the other talking points that I would love to do because uh, we have an hour to work on this. Um, I would say that if you're more interested in that or a lot more of the philosophies, uh, if you look at our YouTube page, um, we have a couple of good videos. What is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? A short five minute video, which kind of gets into that explanation. Um, and then there's a much longer seminar uh, type video buried in there somewhere, like 45 minutes. And I know you have time right now to talk about or to view that. Uh, that goes a lot more into the philosophy. So like, I'm definitely going to cover points that will be covered in those videos. Um, but I'm going to go through, um, you know, if it gets down to it, I'll just tell you to go back and watch that particular video. There's certain points that are going to be really important to us on this stuff. Okay. Um, so. First thing that I'm going to go ahead and tell you is that mindset we're going to have to get to, like the kind of prime directive, golden rule, where we're going to start off right now. And that's safety first, then position, then finish. Okay. Any action that I take within Jiu Jitsu, any position that I take, any technique or anything I execute, I always run through that particular filter safety first, then position, then finish. Okay. Uh, all of that type of execution right there, that's guys every principle I have. So you should know that, okay? Um, and anybody that's trained with me has heard me say that over and over and over again, okay? That's one thing. There's another thing, uh, and you'll notice I tend to group things in groups of threes because I think three is easier to remember. I'll just give you lots of groups of threes, okay? But another filter that I always run through when I do anything um, is whenever I do any situation, any position, any technique, 
I run through the filter of body mechanics first, then legs, then arms, okay? So when in doubt, when I'm trying to figure things out, the easiest filter to go through is body mechanics first, then legs, then arms. Why? Your core should be the strongest part of your body. Your legs will be the next strongest part of your body. And I'm not saying your arms are weak, but in the chain of events right there, it'll be the weaker out of the three. And aside from the weakness aspect of this, there's something to be said about setting up the core and the legs and arms in that order um, that'll make technique and things to do easier in my opinion, okay? Uh, although as you get advanced, everything's working together, we're gonna be coordinated, okay? So today's lesson is we're gonna, first of all, talk about posture, okay? But posture, same thing like my dad, you know, used to yell at me when I was sitting at the table, it was like, you know, sit up with posture, you know, don't slunch over at the uh, table and stuff like that. You know, the way that he yelled at me uh, to yell posture might make a lot of sense to folks that have ever taken any of my classes, um, how much I yell at. But I'm going to make a definition of posture is the alignment of shoulders and hips and how well we're rooted to the ground. So right now, I can say that I'm sitting here with good posture, okay? Shoulders, hips, and how well I'm rooted to the ground, it should be very difficult to move me in this sense, okay? But let's break this down a little bit better right now because the way I'm sitting, uh, this is a basic jiu-jitsu stance right here, whereas I'm on my shins right now, my knees apart, okay? I'm really kind of sitting back with my butt over my heels, shoulders over hips, and I'm driven down and rooted into the ground, okay? Do it from another angle, I'm seated right here, shoulders over hips, well rooted into the ground. And like everything else I do, when I'm taken onto this position, I'm thinking core strength first, then legs, then arms. So really core, how's my position? How's my shoulders over my hips? Okay, what are my legs doing? Okay, and then what are my arms doing? The arms aren't super important just yet, okay? So this is a fairly traditional martial arts thing. It's not only just in Jiu-Jitsu, but uh, I think in many other martial arts right now, okay? And not only am I going through that core, then legs, then arms principle right now, I'm sitting here with the idea that if you're gonna to try to move me or knock me over, my strength's coming from here. My balance point is coming from here at my core, okay? And it's gonna make it difficult to move me at this point, okay? Um, I like to explain this as like being like a tent spike that I'm rooted into the ground. I feel my center of gravity actually below the ground. So it's hard to move me from here, okay? If Trevor is to rush and try to knock me over at this point, it's gonna be difficult at this point because of how I'm rooted over here. If my bounce point is up here towards my shoulders and he tries to knock me down. You get the idea. Okay, so I'm well rooted. I'm taking this core right here. I have this seat. Okay, and I'll start off right now with a little bit of a breathing exercise right now. I have my stance. Okay, I have my uh, good position. Oh, and one other thing you want a little details on this. I tend to sit in this posture position with the tops of my feet driven into the ground with my hips over my heels. I find this one to be comfortable with me. Uh, this is what I can do. Um, if that's not comfortable for you, or some people, some other instructors like to use what they call active toes, the other toes, and sit up this way and have a little bit more of a string, uh, I'm going to leave that a personal preference for you. Sometimes with Jiu Jitsu, like a lot of other things, there's base core techniques or base things I expect you to understand. Okay, but then some things come down to a matter of personal preference. Do you like this way or that way? Which way works better for you? Do it that way, okay? As long as you have a logical way of explaining how to go ahead and do that, go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm sitting here in my uh, position right now, shoulders over hips, okay? Tops of my feet rooted into the ground right now, okay? Just go ahead and pin that video, it's going off. We're having people jump into the room, which is awesome. Okay. Sorry, Gammy, where do you pin the video? How do you pin the video? Oh, the wonders of live. So you go over here and you'll see three dots. Okay. And you go ahead and pin video. Thank you. There we go. My apologies. Again, we're live, folks. Like, you know, no editing this one today. Okay. So, anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. So, I'm my good posture position, shoulders over hips well rooted into the ground. Um, and while I'm here, I'm gonna focus on my breathing, okay? Um, big deep breaths in through my nose, exhale through my mouth, 
I like to keep my mouth closed usually when I'm actually playing or do anything. Obviously, I'm not because I'm talking to everybody at this point. Uh, but an open mouth when you're grappling uh, is just an invitation to hurt yourself, your jaw, to bite your tongue, whatever. Uh, so if I'm telling you to be quiet when you're sparring and you're drilling and you're exercising, or, or more roughly, if I tell you to shut up, it's actually for your safety. I don't want to see anybody get hurt on that. Okay. Um, so I don't clinch my jaw when I do this. I just have my mouth closed, big deep breaths in through my nose and exhale through my mouth. Inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. You know, honestly, I do that so naturally at this point right now, I don't even have to think about it. Like breathing is an automatic thing for me. Um, I can control it when I need to, uh, which is good because how we exert ourselves, okay? But I don't think about it. I just keep that same consistent, constant breath, no matter what action, no matter what position, no matter what setting, okay? And I like that constant breath because uh, jujitsu grappling is a competitive arm right there. Uh, and in these competitive arts, we're looking for edges. And in these edges, we're looking for sometimes we're trying to get information from my opponent. I try not to give information to my opponent by the way I breathe. Okay. If I sit there, if I'm handsome, like, <laughs> it's really obvious that I'm tired. Okay. And when you're tired, you're in trouble. Okay. Or um, a lot of guys that lift will do this one too, or a lot of people will lift. If I sit there, I'm like, <laughs> like that, and I have to take that sudden breath and I'm ready to expel and explode. That's a pretty good tell that you're about to move, uh, explode into something right there, and I can react accordingly. Okay, I like to give very little information to my uh, opponents, so I just keep this constant breath. I, I try to keep the same breath from minute one of the, the encounter to minute ten, and I just keep it even throughout. Um, although, like I said, I focused on my breathing so much, this inhaling through my nose and exhaling through my mouth, that I honestly don't have to think about it. Anymore. Okay. When I say deep breaths, I'm not sitting there taking as deep as I can, but imagine your lungs are kind of expanding down here, filling up the diaphragm, and then comes back over here. So that's what I mean by a deep breath. It's like it's coming from here, not just these kind of shallow breaths right now. And I'm going to be consistent about this the entire time. Okay. So again, I'm sitting here in what we would call good posture, shoulders over hips. Okay. Uh, well rooted into the ground right now. And I'm breathing in a nice, uh, for me, at a relaxed, natural state. Okay, or a consistent state, or a way that doesn't give a lot of information to folks, okay, that stays the same way, okay? But I don't really think about my breathing. That's one of the things that gets really beautiful when you get good at jiu-jitsu and when you get more versed in this, is we're, we're trying to get for, uh, I'm gonna geek out for a second, that ultra instinct mode, where I, you know, I'm so versed in my technique, I'm so versed in what I can do, I don't have to think about things that much. Like, I know how to breathe. I think you know how to breathe, too. You can probably breathe in your entire life. Um, so if you've been, you don't really think about it. Like, and I don't think about the way I breathe, okay? So this is me sitting here with good posture. Following along so far, everything good? Questions? No? Okay, let's move on. Let's, let's uh, get into it. So this is about the self and developing where we're at first and what we need to be, okay? That's half, that's actually might even be more than half the equation of jiu-jitsu. It's like how we, how we conduct ourselves, how we gather ourselves, like, you know, it's this internal thing first, okay? But jiu-jitsu, whether or not you want to call it competitive art or not, I mean, right now, like, we're not in a competitive mode at this point, it is something that works best with the partner. It's actually, it only really can work with the partner or working with somebody else, okay? Um, and in that sense, we'll talk about positions with each other. Now, the definition of whether a position is good or bad is going to be based on um, who has more advantages than the other, okay? But the position we're going to work on right now, which is a basic guard or a closed guard, if you want to be more specific on this, I would consider this a relatively neutral position. Okay. So what we'll do is Trevor's going to go ahead and put me in a, what we'll call a closed guard right now. Okay. Now, guard is simply a position, it's a ground position, because we're on the ground in the jiu jitsu. I'm not going to go through that full explanation. Okay. But it's a ground position where one person's on the top, that would be me. One person's on the bottom, that would be Trevor. But Trevor is allowed to use his legs as part of his offensive and defensive package. Okay. I would argue this position is relatively neutral as opposed to any other position. Guard for a second. Let's take a mount, for example. This is a ground position. One person is on top, that would be me. The posture. One person is the bottom, that would be Trevor. But Trevor really can't use his legs for offensive and defensive purposes. Okay. This is a really bad position for Trevor. There's no arguing who's doing better. It's definitely me at this point. Okay. Here, guard. Okay, 
This is a relatively neutral position. I'll say if everything was equal between strength, size, skill level, experience, et cetera, et cetera, if we're clones of each other, okay? Um, half the time the person on bottom is doing what they want to be doing, half the time the person on top is doing what they want to be doing. In other words, I would consider this a 50-50. It's a relatively neutral position, okay? What's going to determine who's doing better in this situation is the posture of the person on top. That's my posture, me having good posture up here, okay? Uh, if I have good posture in this situation, then I'll be rewarded in at least three ways. Number one, I'm safer against Trevor's attacks, okay? You watch a bit of jiu-jitsu, you watch your housemate or whatever doing it, they'll do a lot of attacks from being on the bottom. If I'm up here, I have good posture, it's gonna be difficult to do that. Number two, I'm in a better position to pass guard. I don't wanna be here too much longer. I wanna figure out a way to break Trevor's legs open and get around this, okay? And number three, I'm in a better position to attack myself. Now we're doing a more sport friendly type of jiu-jitsu, but if I wanted to say bash Trevor's face in, I'll do way more damage here, okay? Because I don't have recovery time. Okay, I can do this from a position that can't reach me. And if you broke down my position to help me here, I can't do the same level again. In other words, if Trevor controls my posture, He's in rewarding tools. He's safer against my attacks. He's in a better position to uh, uh, defend his guard or improve his position, his position, and he's in a much better situation to attack work. Okay? So when it comes full circle, safety, position, finish. All of that prime directive. I always like to group things in threes. If you stick around with me for a while, this stuff's gonna be drilled into your head. Okay? But we're gonna define this closed guard right now is this battle of posture. Because Trevor has this closed guard on me right now. My first priority is keeping myself safe. How do I keep myself safe? I maintain my posture. How do I maintain my posture? I look at where my core is. I look at where my legs are. And I can use my hands too, but we'll just go ahead and leave it neutral for right now. The core and the legs are the more important part about this right now. It's the, the thing we're going to focus on. Okay. So this is a basic closed guard right now. Now, let's switch positions on the top and bottom right now. Okay. A little bit more about this closed guard. A little bit more season three. Too. I tend to think of things, I tend to define my position. There's a lot of different variations of the closed guard, or excuse me, there's a lot of different, uh, there are a lot of variations of closed guard, but there's definitely a lot of variations of the guard. But I like to group things. I like, I like to organize and categorize things because it makes things easier for me to run. Okay. Um, I can categorize this right now as being a low guard. Okay. Because I'm down towards the hips. Hips are low. Or we can have high guards where I'm up towards the shoulders. Okay. High towards the shoulders. Low towards the hips. It's a pretty general rule of thumb. It's not 100% accurate that low tends to be easier to get to easier to maintain, uh, but the expense of some offensive capabilities were high when I work up towards the shoulders, tends to be a little bit harder to get to, tends to be a little bit harder to maintain, but if you know what you're doing from there, you'll get better offensive capabilities. It's a very generalized rule of thumb. Don't hold me to that, but it's a good way to think right now. So if I want to be super specific about the type of guard that I'm working with Trevor right now, I have a low closed guard. Why is it closed? Because my ankles are actually crossed um, and he can't back out of this either. As opposed to these open guards where my legs are open. We're not worrying about that today. We're doing closed guard right now. Okay. And if I want to be super specific about how I'm going to work this closed guard right now, I like to go ahead, squeeze with my thighs slightly above the hips. Okay. Slightly above the hips. And the emphasis I'm going to hold them right now, squeezing my thighs together. If my hips have to come up, if I have to get tighter, if you have to get a little bit closer on this one, even better. Um, might be what I have to do. My core strength comes up and I'm squeezing just above the hips right now. Okay. And I'm, the main thing that's keeping in place and controlling them right now is the use of my thighs at this point. Okay. So that's the specific part of my legs just above the hips. And if I want to be really, really, really specific about this, okay. The hips are the tip of your pelvis. Okay. They kind of come out this way and when I'm standing here, horizontal fashion. Okay. I'm going to be slightly above that in kind of the soft area of the body, kind of the gut, okay, where I don't feel it. I'm going to squeeze into the gut, and then I'm going to clamp down on top of those hip bones, okay? So I'm actually clamping and squeezing and then having this pressure going downwards onto those hips, okay? That's going to take a bit of core strength and a bit of getting used to right there. 
Uh, when I'm really working at active close guard, that's what I like to do. That's the first thing that starting from here, closing up above the hip bones right there, the soft area, we'll call it the belly. Okay, I'm squeezing my knees together as tightly as they can. I'll go ahead and cross my ankles one way or the other. You might have a personal preference, doesn't really matter. And then once I do that, still keeping my thighs clenched together, I'll go ahead and bring my heels down towards the ground. Okay, bring my heels down towards the ground. I really like pushing down on the hips as much as possible when I do this, so it keeps Trevor in place. Okay, or anybody else. Again, this is core strength that gets developed. If you want more about the core strength? Follow along and say Sean's classes, or the Nets classes, or any of the exercise classes. But once we build up that core strength, this is what we're doing with it right now. Okay. I'm holding and I have them squeeze right now. Not only the squeeze with my legs, but the pressure down on the hips. Okay. I tend to be, when I'm doing this also, if I want to be specific, I tend to round my back a bit. Again, a lot of core strength right here. And I tend to keep my chin to my chest. I don't like my head being flat on the ground at any point. I don't like my head really being on the ground because uh, I don't ever want to base off of that. Okay. So this is your basic closed guard. Okay. Now, again, if Trevor wants to do better, if Trevor wants to have the advantage in this situation, he's going to maintain posture is what he's doing. Okay, shoulders over hips, good alignment, uh, center of gravity well rooted into the ground at this point. Okay, this is good for Trevor. If I want to control Trevor, I want to do better, I'm going to control his weight distribution, I'm going to control his posture, I'm squeezing up here, I'm going to track my core, I'm going to pull my knees into myself, I'm going to pull Trevor's hips into myself. When I do that, wait, advantage me. I'm doing better because Trevor's posture is broken down. Trevor comes back up, advantage Trevor. Okay, bring it back down, advantage me. Okay, so that's the first thing about going on the posture right now. Somebody coming in. Yes. No. All right. I'm gonna keep working on this from here. Okay. Now again, there is a battle, or the first battle about the guard that we have to understand is that control of posture and how we're both using our core strength in order to break each other's posture or rather control the posture of the person on top, okay? So that is the first battle that we're gonna have to work through right now is controlling that posture, okay? And it comes from core strength. Now, we're not gonna do this at a competitive level just yet, okay? One of the cool things about learning jiu-jitsu, okay? Because it is a social activity right there. It's the exact opposite of social distancing, as a matter of fact. Uh, whether it being competitive or cooperative, um, it is knowing how to read somebody, knowing how to work to somebody's level, work to somebody's energy points. Um, you know, when you get good at jiu-jitsu, okay, you should be able to work with anybody, okay? And one of the best tests to work with somebody is like, what's the correct amount of resistance to give to somebody, okay? So as a drill, as a partner, if you have a partner right now, this is one of my favorite things to do, is we'll start off Trevor going along. And this is gonna be a bit of an exercise for both of us. So Trevor has his closed guard, he's up around my, uh, uh, my, above my waist at my belly, he's clamping down above my hips. He's really kind of reading me to the ground. His knees are locked in right now. Okay. He's gonna go ahead, use his core, use his legs and try to break me down, okay? But I'm also going ahead and I'm using my core to like maintain my posture. Now, if we were competitive, this would be the big battle right here. This would be the first battle. Can Trevor control my posture in some way, or can I maintain and control my own posture on this? Okay, that's the big battle on this right now, okay? But we're gonna do this in a cooperative fashion, okay? Uh, we're gonna do this in a cooperative fashion so we have an understanding of posture, or we're gonna do this in a cooperative fashion so we both get to work out our core strength on this, okay? So the game is, I'm gonna tell Trevor, hey, you gotta break me down 20 times on a set amount of time, okay? And what this is gonna allow Trevor to do is learn how to work his core, learn how to work this technique, you know, get a feel for this, okay? It's gonna also help me a bit on this too, but it's also gonna help me in the terms of like, what is the correct amount of resistance to give Trevor right now? After all, I said like, hey, Trevor, break me down 20 times. I just fight him like crazy every single time and I don't let him do anything. I'm a terrible training partner at that point. Like, uh, we'll never get through anything if I fight through on every single technique, if I fight through on every single Thing we'll do on this. We'll be here all day long. And I'm not planning to be here all day long. Okay. On the other hand, it's like, hey, Trevor, break me down. I do all the work for him and he doesn't get to do anything. 
I'm also an awful training partner, okay? Trevor learned, gained nothing from that if I did all the work for him, okay? So what we're trying to establish, where we're trying to find ourselves in this happy little Goldilocks zone, not too hot, not too cold, not too hard, not too soft, but I just want to give the correct amount of resistance so I can go ahead and work with my partner. And this is going to benefit me in two ways. Number one, if I don't know how to work with somebody, um, I'm not going to get any better because there's just no ability to work on techniques and stuff. Jiu-Jitsu is an activity um, that you are going to have to work with other people. So that's number one. And number two, this is also beneficial to me because it allows me to go ahead and, and start off by learning how to read somebody's energy or read somebody's kind of strength levels or read somebody's output on stuff like that, which actually at a very advanced level coming out is going to be really important. Like, you know, jiu-jitsu is a very tactile art in that sense, okay? Like I have to be able to understand it. Okay, so a good rule of thumb is like, you know, going back to that posture breaking drill, if I told Trevor to break me down 20 times, if I wanted to go through this, it shouldn't take me, or take Trevor in this case, take us any less than 60 seconds, any more than 90 seconds, okay? That's a little rule of thumb. Throw a timer on, I'm not gonna do that because there's no questions over there. Um, but go ahead, we'll time that out. Shouldn't take you any less than 60 seconds, any more than 90 seconds. Honestly, we've done this so many times, I don't have to do this with the timer right now. Trevor, go ahead and break me down 20 times. I'm going to make him work a little bit. And we're just going to go ahead and do this. You can keep up with our pace right now. I can make the adjustments going through. If I think I'm being too easy on Trevor, I'll go harder. If I think I'm going too hard, I can make that adjustment. Okay. But I'm learning where to give my resistance right now. What I'm not learning how to do is count. <laughs> is that 20 minutes? Oh, okay. Four. A little bit more resistance each time. Yeah, this is a core exercise right here. What? Oh. Some of you might have been sold on jiu-jitsu for the whole core strength benefits on that. This is one of the best ones to do with a partner on there. Okay, it's one of my absolute favorites. Fair is fair, because I'm killing some time right now. Maybe I should do the same thing right now. So Trevor gets his workout in. I get my workout in. I like to do things fast. So it's Now, even when we're being totally cooperative with each other, okay, when we're working techniques and we're working apart on this, there is a little element of that competition right there. And again, competition is not a bad thing in this. It's like Trevor needed that feedback. I needed that feedback. We need that little kind of competitive. So we know that the technique was actually going to go ahead and work when they're being fully competitive on this, okay? Um, more on that mindset at some point down the road. But again, part of the art of learning and working in jiu-jitsu is learning how to work with somebody, how to match somebody's energy. Uh, in that sense, um, if you're the housemate that's been doing jiu-jitsu for a long time and trying to top the other housemate that hasn't done this before, okay, how do you get into this? Well, it's building up that resistance level first, okay? That's rule number one about jiu-jitsu, training jiu-jitsu, is how to work with someone, okay? And again, there's cooperative elements to this, okay? What we did right now was cooperative, even with a little bit of competitive, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the cooperative camp. Again, I like grouping and, and subject matters and, and filing things that way. But a lot of what we do in jiu-jitsu is there's competitive elements of things too, okay? In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do this drill, or you're gonna go ahead and do this drill. Hopefully you're following along, you have a chance to do this, okay? But we're gonna also, we need that competitive element. You're gonna go ahead and do this drill when we're not letting you Okay, when we're not letting you Okay, so as before, on the cooperative version of this drill, I said like, hey, Trevor, break me down 20 times, and I was gonna give him appropriate resistance. Now it's gonna be, hey, Trevor, try to break me down, and I'm not gonna allow that to happen, okay? And I usually like to set the time for 30 seconds on that, okay? We'll see on this rule right now is like in terms of this. Again, body mechanics first, then legs and arms for both of us, okay? We talked about body mechanics and legs. If you want to use your arms right now, go ahead. 
do what you can. Let's try to break the toes off. Ready? Go. 30 seconds. Timer. <laughs> gonna see each other. Put you to a high guard. Okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much time I should have the time around again. It's been running right there. But I've talked this to you. Maybe you can do this with yourself, or you can do this, you know, not only watching live, but you can do this at home. You can rewind this right now. It's the beauty of doing this on tape right there. Okay. So you can do a nice little 30 second drill like that. We can go full competition style. Okay. Full competition style. Now, I'll tell you from this top position where I'm at right now, because everything's kind of yin and yang about you get to, okay? That's what I do, how my opponent reacts, how I react to that, et cetera, et cetera, uh, can make it really confusing, okay? But right now, my goal is to keep myself safe. How do I keep myself safe? It's by maintaining my posture. How do I maintain my posture? Well, we set it first. What do I do with my core? Shoulders over hips, well rooted into the ground. What do I do with my legs? I'm on my shins, kind of legs apart. Okay, not super far apart. I like my knees about the same with my opponent's body. I happen to be driving on the tops of my feet. I'm sitting here. Okay, um, what do I do with my arms? Well, here's another way to think about it. Safety being my responsibility, okay? It's always an internal thing first. So whatever technique, whatever position, whatever I do in jiu-jitsu, I think first, what do I have to do? Okay, what are my responsibilities? What is the best possible situation that I can be in at this point? Okay, that's the first thing I think about. And then I think about, after that, what do I do to my opponent? Okay, but it's also, excuse me, internal then external. Internal then external. Think internal first, then go to external right there. What do I need to do? Then look at the situation right there, okay? Uh, so I've done everything that I think I can do right now, okay? At least in terms of controlling myself with my core and my legs, okay? Maybe with my arms, okay? But we'll get to that in a second. Then I take a look at Trevor. Back to the screen. There we go. Okay, then I take a look at my opponent, I take a look at the situation, I'm like, well, what can I do to the situation and make me, myself safer? Okay, Trevor laying flat on his back with his hands away from myself right there with this kind of distance, okay, but not socially distanced. Okay, we're good with this right here. Okay, this is where I like to be right now. Okay, uh, I like him at that distance right there. I'm out of range of him, particularly since I have relatively long arms. Uh, I'm safer here, okay? I'll never use the word completely safe Okay, this is an abbreviation. I'll say safer. Everything's relative degrees based on my position. Okay, but where I'm at, since we said it was neutral from where Trevor's at right now, I'm safer and I want to keep myself safer. I'll be keeping at this. But how do I do that? I like to go ahead and just rest a hand on my pump's chest here. Okay, somewhere on the center line right here. I'll tell you right now for where the hands can go. Okay, think of your opponent as being like a table with the corners being the shoulder and the shoulder and the hip and the hip, okay? As far as where I can put my individual hands, it tends to be somewhere on the table, okay? Somewhere between the shoulders and the hips. Definitely don't want it on the ground. You set yourself up for attacks and you don't want to cross the center line of your opponent either. I'll basically start giving up my back at that point. So I kind of like to rest directly on the center line, okay? And I can draw back my hand to the point as long as I can maintain good posture, okay? Remember that, um, that uh, yeah. body mechanics and legs and arms, okay? The body mechanics, my posture is first, my hand supported, okay? I don't want my hand way out here, my posture broken down, that's gonna go ahead and make it easier to break me down, okay? Again, it's that filter, it's useful, body mechanics and legs and arms. I have this hand here on the center, and actually it's pretty relaxed. I don't put a lot of weight on this for right now. If I was sitting there eh, trying to push this down, I'm trying to back it one way or the other, I'm gonna go flat. My strength comes again from my core, my legs, my center of gravity, and how well I'm rooted to the ground. Okay. And this hand just tends to kind of rest here and be easy at this point. Okay. I'm just kind of relaxed at this point, just here on the center. You know, it's insurance though. If Trevor tried to sit up, I can shove him down. If he tries to pull me down, well, it's extra insurance. It makes it harder. But other than that, it tends to be relaxed. Okay. Just to here. This opposite hand, or my other hand, that's to be my left hand, I'm right hand, but I can do this either hand. I like to use the heel of my palm. I like to go ahead and find the hip bone, and I'll push directly down on the hip bone. I'll actually kind of lock out my arm at this point. So I'll have this connection and be heavier here, okay? Now, I don't think I can stop Trevor's core with my arm, but I can be annoying here. I can go ahead and kind of gauge things. 
and keep it a little bit tighter right there and make it difficult. Now, if you're wearing a gear, if you're not wearing a gear, if you have the belt, if you're not having the belt, nothing I've done so far necessarily requires either of us to be wearing the uniform belt. I don't grab pieces of clothing if I don't have to, okay? My jiu-jitsu tends to be, my style tends to be, doesn't matter what either of us are wearing, uh, gi, no gi, naked, hopefully not, um, or whatever, I tend to look for body mechanics first as opposed to clothing. So I'll find the hip bone directly and push my heel of my palm on that. When I do that, I'm going with my thumb tight to my hand right here, okay? I don't like pushing off or defending or doing anything with this because my thumb turns into a weak point right there, turns into a point of injury. So I keep my thumb tight to my palm. I put the heel of my palm on the hip. I'll put a bit of weight on this right here. And I want my so-called safety position. We'll call this the safety position when I'm in posture. So what's the safety position? I'm inside of Trevor's closed guard. I have good posture, shoulders over hips, well rooted into the ground. Okay, I have one hand out in front. It happens to be my right hand because I'm right-handed, but I can go left-handed if I wanted to too. Dead center, okay? But wherever I have this right here, I'm still maintaining this posture. The posture is meant for me to, um, or it's meant for me to help maintain my posture. It's not a substitution for that. It's for core, then legs, then arms, okay? So one hand out here in the center, one hand up here on the hip bone, and I'm going ahead, keeping that pressure, um, Bit of pressure here on the hip bones, but I'm basically keeping myself safe by maintaining my posture and weight. Okay, this is my so called safety position. So now, when if we go into a competitive mode and Trevor tries to break me down, I'm gonna be difficult because I have a good structure, a good framework. I'm looking at what he's doing right too internal than external, internal than external. Always thinking about that. Okay, so a good 30 second drill right now, or a good drill to work with your partner if you're following along. Is just go ahead, start off in this position. We'll give you a bit of a countdown right now, okay? And all I care about is control of the posture at this point. That's the root of everything we're gonna do right now is who controls the posture. Who controls the posture? It's like, you know, controlling the center square and the, uh, uh, and the chessboard. It's like controlling the spice on rackets. It's, um, I don't know, I was reading Dean last night. Um, but it, it's our base element for that. So go ahead, 30 seconds top, 30 seconds bottom. I'll time you where you're at right now and go. Somebody's watching one right now and doing this. Okay, I'm gonna use this to check. Speed right now, so you can watch from this. You can watch from here, try to move that. Quick breather. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Couple more seconds, couple more seconds, couple more seconds. Couple more seconds. Good. Top to bottom, same thing. Right here. Go. Yeah. Couple more seconds, couple more seconds, couple more seconds. And relax. Now. Turn it through any issue thing, going hicks on you. Notice that when both of us were trying to maintain our posture and we we're trying to maintain it, it wasn't here and being top of you. It wasn't, neither of us are shoving down right there. Okay. It came from the core and the legs, it really came from the hips and these micro adjustments and how we were moving with our hips in this case. Okay. But if somebody tried to break me down, I was basically thrusting like this or making my adjustments here, not here, not from the top, not swaying around, not where I would be unstable at that. Okay, so we're learning to use our core. And notice when we're doing this, that both of us, I mean, are breathing relatively natural right now. Okay, I'm not saying this isn't tiring. Actually, as a matter of fact, a lot of times when you're watching jujitsu, okay, the, the things that are uh, the, seemingly when they're staying in place, when they're holding there, when they're both fighting the cores against each other, sometimes that's the most tiring stuff of all. Okay, um, although you get used to it. Okay, so there was definitely, Physically, or from a physics standpoint, it's not, technically not work if you're not moving distance, but there's definitely energy expended from both of us, okay? If you want to be geeky about that though, like force equals distance equals work, whatever, <laughs> okay? But there you go, there's your explanation of a drill. And that one was competitive right there, how to work from the closed guard. Now I'll ask you a question right now. Do you find it easier to be on the top or do you find it easier to be on the bottom? Show of hands. 
See out there? Found it easier to be on top. Who found it easier to be on the bottom? Found it one to be more natural than the other. There's no right or wrong answer. Okay. I will tell you when you're developing, when you're starting off, this is your first time doing it. Some of you are going to find it more natural to be on top, and some of you are going to find it more natural to be on the bottom. Sometimes it has to do with the size of them. The smaller people tend to wind up on the bottom grappling, but not always. Okay. Um, but it's not always related to size. That is perfectly natural right now to be more comfortable in one situation or the other. Okay. This isn't really all that comfortable with the situation again, like you've never done this before. Like, hey, Trevor, get in between my legs, I'll lay on the ground and get right that way. Uh, seems more common nowadays, but when I started off uh, way in the stone ages of jiu-jitsu, uh, before anybody knew what that was, that's a weird way to fight. Okay. Uh, but even then, saying that's weird, getting used to it. You might be more comfortable on the top or you might be more comfortable on the bottom, but that is perfectly natural. Right now. And that's actually perfectly natural for a long time. Okay. Uh, some point down the years, you'll get versed in both, both places to be comfortable. It really doesn't make it too much of a difference. Uh, but don't worry about that right now. Okay. Uh, I'm more worried about the idea that we're just getting you comfortable with the idea of jiu-jitsu. Um, but there are certain things that are not going to be comfortable. There are certain things that are not going to be natural. There are certain things that are going to be very counterintuitive. Okay, they logically make sense when we really break it down, but they're definitely counterintuitive. The intuition is like when I'm trying to maintain the posture, it's, oh, I'm going to do this with my hand. I'm going to go ahead and fire off here. Okay, um, that's most people's intuition. I see that all the time. Okay, the correct way to do this though is coming from here, coming from my core, coming from my legs, and moving in that situation, not this situation. Okay, the correct way is actually working everything together. But again, I'll repeat it so like you've heard it a million times core, then legs then arms, okay? Now, regardless of which one you happen to feel better about at this point, we're gonna go back to the bottom for a second. We gave the person on top a little bit too much information, okay? So I'm on my clothes, dark, and we're on camera. Okay, squeezing my thighs up around Trevor's uh, midsection, clamping down the hips, feel it down, using my core on the center, okay? So Trevor's going ahead and using his core too, he has his core, he has his legs he has his arms right now and when i try to break him down i try to sit and try to do anything he's using this very effectively he's coordinating he's doing everything together okay and he's being very effective in this side. okay now from here even though i said core and legs and arms i go in that order right now and sit here attacking core and legs i have to think about what this arm is doing right now this is very annoying to me right now and it's really preventing me from what i want to do so i have to go ahead and remove that obstacle okay I'm still fighting with my core, I'm still fighting with my legs, but because my arms aren't the primary way of breaking them down, my arms are also allowed for offense and defense, okay? A weird analogy, it makes sense, is like, think about when you're driving a car if you're old enough, you know, you apply the power with your feet, you apply the control with your arms. It's not a perfect analogy for jiu-jitsu, but it's gonna work for what we're doing right now. At any rate, what I need to do is I gotta get at least one of these arms right now. This hand's forward, this hand's on my chest, this hand's kind of reaching in. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and two on one. I always like to joke, it's not really a joke, it's actually true, that I don't really believe in the concept of a fair fight. You know, I didn't spend all these hours on the mat, I didn't spend these years training for a fair fight. Like, I've done as much work as I can to make things as much of my advantage as possible. Okay? That's what I'm all about right there is taking advantage of everything I can right there. That's not necessarily a fair fight. Okay, we're not completely even on this. In this situation right now, if I can create some advantage for myself, you know, if Trevor is holding up with one arm, if he's uh, positioning, he's defending, he's attacking, whatever with one arm, sometimes I'll get the advantage by going two arms on one arm. Okay, if you want to be technical about it, watch what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and reaching underneath both hands, okay, and I'm just grabbing onto his wrist or his forearm right now with both hands so, like so. Okay, I like to be underneath, thumbs underneath, and I'm grab it like this. Okay, one, two, holding on to this. Okay, now that I have this, what I'm gonna do is pop, extend, explode, and bring his arm all the way up. Now again, I'm moving this pop in motion, I'm going and exploding up this way right there, okay, away from myself, and I want a full extension on this. It's not, okay, it's a full explosion, like pop, boom, right to here. Why do I need that full extension? Why do you get that arm all the way? Well, the same reason like you're playing baseball, you don't stop when the uh, bat makes contact with the ball. If you're playing tennis, you don't stop when the racket's contact with the ball. If you're playing golf, you don't stop when the golf club makes contact with the ball. You want the fall through. That's where the power comes from. 
Okay. I always drive and go through this. Okay. Same principle right now. I'm going to go ahead and reach two on one, not a fair fight. Okay. Taking that advantage of that, holding onto the wrist and pop, exploding. This arm comes all the way up. Okay. I've made that explosion. And this is not an obstacle to me, at least not temporary. I pop all the way up to the point where my elbows are fully locked out. Uh, my arms are extended. Okay. And I can go ahead and maybe control them from here. But my main thing is to control that posture. Now coordinating everything together, pulling my arms, pulling my legs, pulling my torso and core. Okay, everything breaks them down and I can control that posture, okay? Yeah, copy on empty stomach. I wonder if that's coming through the camera right there. Okay, so one more time. Trevor's doing what he's supposed to do and he's in his safety position. Good core, good leg, good arms. And I'm finding this annoying. I can't break it down right now the way I want to right now. Maybe he has a D, maybe he doesn't. He does have a D. Maybe you have a D, maybe you don't. Maybe you're working with part right there. But I'm going to go ahead and reach. One, two, grabbing onto the arm and pop. That full extension, that full explosion right now. And coordination, secret word of the day. Core the legs and arms, everything works together. Everything works to right turn this posture down. And I can hold it. And why do I want to hold it? Why do I want to continue this posture? Simple, safer against his attacks, safer against him passing my guard, better position to attack myself. Safety, position, Finish. One more time, maybe he goes left hand. We'll do it on that side. Doesn't really matter to me because it's gonna be a two on one. Boom, reaching in, grabbing, holding tight right there at the wrist, at the forearm, whatever. Pop, explosion. And again, core, legs, and arms. Everything brings him down like that. Everything's working together. Yeah. And again, Trevor's a good training partner right now because that's the cooperative phase right now. We're going ahead and he's helping me out right now. He knows that I have to work the technique and he knows that he has to give a certain amount of resistance. He can't be too floppy on this, okay? But he can't be too stiff. He's right at that goalie lock zone right now. He's working from there, okay? Now that you have a little bit more knowledge, you can go ahead and run that drill with the partner right now. So all I care about on this drill is controlling the posture of the person on top, okay? If you're on the bottom or maintaining that posture if you're on top, okay? That's literally all I care about. Okay, so that's all you have to do. Now, both of you have a little bit more knowledge about how to uh, maintain posture or break that posture. Let's see how that drill goes. Trevor and I will kind of play around right now with that. Okay, so you can kind of go at the timing. Hopefully you're doing this partner, not looking at us. Maybe you can see what's going on. We'll start from here and let's go. Notice I can switch hands. He's doing various things right now. There you go, it's broke my posture. Let's try that again, see where I'm at. Playing. And again, notice when I'm holding my part up, <laughs> I'm using core than legs and arms. But I've been doing this for a long time at a pretty high level, but everything starts off this control of posture. And that's all we care about right now. Why is that the only thing we care about right now? Aside from that safety position finish, honestly, all the fun, exciting stuff that you might have seen on other instructional videos that you can do from the guard are not going to work without that understanding of posture. Won't work at all. You have to understand posture first. You have to understand how to keep yourself safe. You have to figure out how to control an opponent before any of the other stuff works. Okay? Out of breath yet? Try it the other way around. Try it with the different, uh, the different top and bottom. Hey, if you're lucky enough to be working with multiple people on this, maybe you can shuffle around among yourselves. Maybe you can find a different training partner. Okay? Whereas shelter in place, you might get really, really used to working with the same person. I'm pretty used to working with Trevor. I'm really, really used to working with Trevor at this point. One of the beauties of being able to work jujitsu, okay, or getting good at this, is being able to work with different folks. We will really work with anybody, being able to compete with anybody. They say size doesn't matter, huge lie, okay? Um, it's not the primary thing that matters, but it definitely does matter. But we train ourselves to work in different situations with different body types, with different temperaments, et cetera, et cetera, okay? But right now, I just got Trevor, which is pretty good. Maybe I'll do this for a 30 second drill so you control Sue's posture and whatever. Ready, go. <laughs> Again, keep working. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. Again. Didn't seem like a lot of technical work was going on. Didn't seem like a whole lot of stuff was going on. Trust me, that is tiring right there. It's a good core workout right there. And jiu-jitsu is some of the best core workouts I can think of because you, 
it's not a set thing. You're working against somebody that um, is trying to do the same thing back at you. It's trying not to actively let you do that, which is what makes it to me fun and interesting. Okay. But again, that understanding of posture can drill and work that is one of the most important things to do within Jiu Jitsu. Okay. Keep looking on this screen right here because we've got screens right here, even when the camera's right there. So, like, uh, yeah, it's live and we don't know what you, I, I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing, if that makes sense. Okay. Following along so far, so good. Thumbs up out there in TV land or YouTube land or Zoom land or wherever you happen to be. If this is making sense, you're enjoying yourself right now. <laughs> All right. Now, let's go back to the top position again. In this perspective. Now, I want to say safety position in quotation fingers. Did I do that today? I almost always do that. Safety position, <laughs> right? Um, again, I would never say that you're 100% safe in any situation. You want to be 100% safe, wrap yourself in bubble tape, uh, stay in bed all day right there. Hope the roof doesn't fall on you. There's no such thing as being 100% safe. There's degrees of safety, okay? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, because I'm in this uh, guard, because I'm in Trevor's closed guard, because we're in this so-called neutral position where things can sway either his way or my way based on my posture, okay? I'm not all that safe right now, okay? If there's a secret, and there's a lot of secrets to Jiu Jitsu, okay? They're not really secrets, there's something I wanna tell you. Um, this understanding that I'm never 100% safe and respecting that uh, is what keeps me safe. Okay, understanding that I can't be too comfortable in this, whether I'm on top or I'm on the bottom, whether I think I like one or the other right now, I never get too comfortable in this, okay? I always take um, my safety very, um, I, I take that as a personal responsibility right there. Why? Because, A, if I don't think about that, if I don't think about the safety of the position or of the situation, okay, A, my opponent can certainly take advantage of that because they're not looking out for my safety. That's one at least not in that sense, from that safety position finish standpoint and the sports standpoint too. And B, okay, I'll say this is really important right now. I got This is an at-risk activity. I got to be thinking about my safety at all times right now because things can go badly, okay? This is a fairly innocent drill right now, but things can go badly at some point. I, all, I never take that for granted that you, you can take some big injuries on jiu-jitsu. So thinking about that safety isn't necessarily fatalistic or... or uh, insulating myself in bubble wrap. It's just reality of the situation in that right now. Okay, I gotta think about my safety. And anyway, I don't feel all that safe in Trevor's closed guard, especially Trevor, I don't feel safe in his guard at all, but I definitely don't feel safe in his closed guard right there. It can go one way or the other. Safety is always relative to my position. And if I wanna get any safer, I have to get out of his guard. I have to pass the guard we're not there yet right now. At the very least, I have to go ahead and crack Trevor's guard open. I gotta figure out a way to unlock his legs. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead there's a bunch of different ways to do this. This one happens to be my favorite. This one's known as the doorstop pass, okay? Why are we calling it the doorstop pass? Because, well, if you look at the way my leg is right now, I'll show you my left leg. It's like a wedge right now between my elbow, uh, between my elbow, between my knee, my heel, and my hip. There's a bit of a wedge. If you're sitting the way that I'm sitting right now, there's a wedge right there too. Kind of resembles a doorstop. And doorstops are designed to keep doors closed or keep doors open, okay? Now, the analogy works so far right now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is whichever hand I have in front, I'm gonna go left hand because it looks better on the camera at this point. If my left hand to be on the chest, if my right hand to be on the hip, I'm gonna go ahead and take my left knee and put this right in the center of Trevor's elbow. Okay, I'm gonna bring it right to the center. Look, I can't just bring it straight through here usually, okay? A lot of times, watch on the news, I'm gonna circle, bring my knee back, and then jam it forward again. And notice when I do this, I never break down my posture because it's that direct to the safety first, then position, then finish. So good posture, I'll go ahead, watch how my shoulders stay over my hips. Go ahead, bring this leg back, and then bring this knee into the center, right into the tailbone right there. This is not just a doorstop, it's hip stop. Trevor's hips are not allowed to get closer. Trevor's hips are not allowed to come up. I'm basically going ahead and trying to keep them in place. Ooh, my posture wants to break forward a little bit, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to do two things at once. Can you handle that? Two things at once. Okay, the two things that happen at once is number one, the hand that was here on the, uh, the chest is causing me to lurch forward a little bit. So I'll put both hands on the hip bones, heel my hands on the hip bones, lock out my elbows, elbows pointed behind myself, and I'll hold them down here. That's number one thing that I'll do. And at the same time, so we'll call that 1B, if my left knee happens to be in the center, if my left knee's in the tailbone, I'll take a step up with my right foot, maintaining my posture. 
And if you want lines, I like hip, hip, foot, hip, hip, foot. That line like so, okay? We'll just say too close, too far, problematic, hip, hip, foot, just about right, okay? Notice right now my shoulders are not going over my hands. My arms are straight up and down when I do this. I have this pressure on Trevor's hips so he can't get any closer. He can't lift his hips up. And keeping this pressure on his hips, I'm gonna go ahead, push my hips into his ankles, sit back, and unlock the legs, okay? That is the door stop pass. We'll go ahead and do a different angle on this. Uh, let's see what you're doing here. Always a wide TV, folks. Okay, so the door stop pass. I will go with right hand in front this time, left hand lips. I can do this either side. I start off, I always start off good posture, okay? This will make more sense to go through. I never want to fight through a bad position. I want to fight out of a bad position. Hang out with me long enough, train long enough. That statement makes more and more sense. I'm fighting out of a bad situation. So how can I go ahead? What's the safest I can be in the closed guard? My safety position. Good posture, shoulders over hips, hands in the correct position. Sternum and hip bone. Do I feel safe? Not <laughs> really, not against Trevor. He's too dangerous right here. What do I have to do? I have to open up his guard. So I do that. I start with my right hand in the center right here. My right knee goes into the tail. Walk out, loops around right there. I can't go through his butt. So I go back and around while I maintain my posture in the time. Boom. And two things happen at once. Hand goes on the hip, hand, foot goes up, wind up the hips. I could get going. Okay. Shoulders stay over hands. Okay. Keep pressing down on those hips. And now I will push my hips into Trevor's ankles, pushing back and then locks. Now I'm going to open guard right now, which is its own whole level of danger, to be honest with you. But at least I've actually done something at my point, I've done something well. I feel against most people a little bit safe at that point. At least, even if I don't feel safe at that point, it's the step in the process to go ahead and get through that guard. You can't pass directly out of a closed guard. You're going to have to open up first, okay? That is known as the door stop pass, okay? Do it one more time, maybe from this angle over here. Good, close it up. Partner, I have my good posture, shoulders over hips, hands in the correct position, one, two, okay? And now, since my right hand happens to be in front, my right knee is what goes in front. I'm right-handed, I tend to do things right-handed, but you can do it either way. It's good to practice both. In the center, take your step up, and put the hand on the hip at the same time. Look how my posture stays good. Look how my shoulders never go over my hands. I gotta maintain this posture, so I'm back here with my knee in the center controlling Trevor's hips. Remember, what do I have to do to myself? Maintain posture. Then I'll have to do Trevor. Internal, external. Internal, external. Okay? Go ahead. Keep that pressure on the hips. Boost my hips back into them. And it usually unlocks the hips. One quick tip right here. If it's right here, if I've done this, if I can't get him open right now, he's being super stubborn. He's being super strong on this. I can have an addition. I can have a little bit of a pry. I can use my elbow on the inside. Okay, sometimes I'll add things into the technique. Again, I try to use it with my core and my legs. If that wasn't enough, use a little bit of this pry. Look, do this, boom. Elbow goes on the inside of the thigh right here towards the inside of the knee. And I'll go ahead and try to flare this open, but I don't stop pushing my hips back. I do that at the same time. The guard opens up and then we're on a different game right there. Okay, so now in a very, very basic sense of these techniques, okay, from working the guard, there's two things we did first. Number one, can the person on top maintain their posture? Can they maintain that and stay neutral or stay with a good posture? That's number one. And number two, now giving that person on the bottom something to do, can you actually keep your guard closed, okay? If you're working somebody close to your size, maybe that's easy. If you're fighting several weights out of your category, maybe that might be a little bit more difficult. But for right now, we're gonna assume that everybody's equal right now, and that's the game, okay? So we'll wind up on one last competitive drill, okay? So the idea is, the person on the bottom, all you have to do is A, keep your guard closed, and you'll have an easier time keeping your guard closed, keeping your ankles locked at that point, if you control the posture of the person on top. From the top position, all you have to do is control your own posture, keep yourself safer, and if you can do that, go ahead and work your guard. Now, you might not see anything happen on a 30 second drill there, okay? If you watch high level jiu-jitsu once it goes to a closed guard, you might see guys sit in the closed guard for minutes at a time. That's okay. It's so not to say that they're not working. You're talking about that. They're not expending energy. They're expending tons of energy at that point. There's a lot of technique going back. 
okay? But you can see people stay in that position for quite some time. So go ahead with your partner right now, start off in that closed guard. And again, that's all I care about. Don't care about sweeps, don't care about submissions, don't care about any of the fancy stuff. Understand how to control posture, how to keep your legs closed, okay? We'll do this drill right now just because it's better than sitting around the screen. Okay, last thing to do, ready, go. And there you go. Go ahead and go top to bottom, same thing. And again, if nothing happens, don't consider that a failure. If you couldn't open up the guard, if you couldn't keep the person's posture down, especially over the time, that is not a failure, okay? Those things happen right there. You know, if they bust open your guard in two seconds, okay, great. Next time if you can hold them four seconds, that's 100% improvement right there, okay? It's your first day, some of your first days right there, you just keep building it up and that's how you improve in jiu-jitsu. Okay, ready, go. Because hopefully right now they're not looking at us. <laughs> they're, they're, they're with each other right now, ah, like that. Okay, unless you're watching this at home by yourself. Just try to put some by yourself, just put it your core. Yeah, there you can go, right there. All right, that's about 30 seconds. But it gives you some stuff to work on right now. It gives you some stuff to, to work with the partner. And again, you can adjust the competitive level uh, with the partner based on, especially if one person's more experienced and one person's less experienced, adjust that competitive level right there. And if both of you are new or at the same experience level, this is still a good drill right there. It's still a good drill to go ahead and focus on, I would call this fundamentals of fundamentals and basics of basics, controlling the posture and keeping the guard closed and certain things like that. Uh, again, for the advanced folks out there, if you don't have this understanding of posture, or if you don't have an understanding of posture, if you don't have a mastery of that, your guard's not gonna go that far, okay? It's really gonna stagnate whether you wanna pass or if you wanna get on the bottom. I'll give you another thing right here, and I'll leave this as a final thought. If, you know, martial arts is supposed to be mastery of the self, okay? Uh, Jiu-Jitsu is a martial art. Jiu-Jitsu is a lot about mastery of the self, okay? Jiu-Jitsu in a practical sense is how I control somebody, how I can make Trevor or anybody else do something that they don't wanna do, tap out, cry on. Okay, um, but if I can't control myself, how am I gonna control somebody else? All right, so we'll be back on same time tomorrow. We'll have a continuation of the lesson from there. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I'm looking forward to working with you online right there. Uh, YouTube, you can find me on the website. I ask me any questions, jump in on Zoom. Um, and then once we're back in place, one, once uh, the orders are lifted, once we can roll, I'm really looking forward to seeing you all back on that. Uh, thanks for being here and we'll see you soon. It's gonna be a madhouse when the train starts again. <laughs>